Welcome to Hell! Were we wrong? We now realize that the surface temperature of Venus is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than a baker's Ooh. oven. Lead would be molten at that temperature. And when it rains, it rains sulfuric acid. For centuries, many speculations have been about Earth's volcanic sister planet, Venus. Recently, it was discovered that during the Cold War, the Soviet Union secretly captured some strange images of Venus and hid them from the public. However, recently, these long-buried photos have come to light, and scientists are in a panic as these images might challenge everything we know about our solar system. Could these newly revealed Venusian images hold clues to the existence of alien life on the planet? And what other mysteries might they unveil about the enigmatic world of Venus? Well, I just think they beat us to the punch. We've been talking about it and working on it, but nothing's happened. Join us on a captivating journey as we uncover the secrets behind the declassified photos from Venus and their potential impact on the world. After World War II, a captivating saga unfolded between two global powers, the United States and the Soviet Union. They both engaged in a fierce rivalry that transcended conventional battlegrounds, stretching into the vast expanse of outer space itself. The launch of the Soviet satellite Sputnik 1 in 1957, the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth, worsened matters as it sparked a sense of urgency and competition in the United States. However, Little did the world know that the space race between these superpowers had concealed an important secret. The Soviet Union, in a bid to outsmart the U.S., hid some strange photographs captured from their voyages to Venus. These controversial space snapshots have raised concerns among scientists, casting doubt on the validity of long-held beliefs regarding our solar system. Before delving into the mysterious images of Venus captured by Soviet space probes, let us start from the beginning, the space race. The space race was a fierce competition between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. At the time, the United States and the Soviet Union were like competing athletes trying to outdo each other in exploring space. After World War II, both nations seized the opportunity to get Germany's rocket engineers and advanced technology, including the V-2 rockets. The United States gained the expertise of Werner von Braun, a prominent rocket engineer who led their space program. Meanwhile, the Soviets recruited Sergei Korolev, a Ukrainian-born visionary, to head their space endeavors. In 1955, both countries announced their plans to launch satellites into orbit. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union took the lead by successfully launching Sputnik 1, the first satellite in orbit. It was a significant achievement, leaving the United States behind. Four months later, the United States celebrated its success with the launch of Explorer 1. During the space race, the Soviets achieved a significant milestone when they successfully launched cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin aboard the Vostok 1 spacecraft in April 1961. Gagarin's historic mission marked the first time a human had ever orbited the Earth garnering tremendous acclaim both within the Soviet Union and globally. This triumph was followed by the United States' achievement just three weeks later, as astronaut Alan Shepard embarked on his pioneering journey aboard the Freedom 7 spacecraft, making him the first American to venture into space. The United States, feeling the pressure of lagging, made a bold claim on May 25, 1961, when President John F. Kennedy declared that America would be the first to land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. This marked the beginning of the ambitious Apollo program. Alongside Apollo, other notable milestones occurred. In February 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth, while in June 1963, Soviet cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman in space. NASA received increased funding to achieve its daunting goal of reaching the moon first by the end of the decade. In addition to Apollo, NASA launched the Gemini program to develop the necessary technology. Gemini saw American astronaut Ed White perform the first American spacewalk. However, the Soviets had already achieved this feat with Alexei Leonov's spacewalk a few months earlier. Gemini also witnessed the first docking of two spacecraft in Earth's orbit. 
After extensive testing, training, and numerous experiments, the Apollo 11 spacecraft was launched on July 16, 1969. On board were U.S. astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. The mission encountered challenges, leading to a manual landing of the lunar module named the Eagle. Finally, on July 20, 1969, the Eagle landed on the moon's surface. Neil Armstrong stepped outside, becoming the first to walk on the moon. His famous words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, resonated worldwide. With this achievement, America won the space race, while Soviet attempts to land on the moon between 1969 and 1972 failed. As the goal was accomplished, public interest in lunar missions declined. In July 1975, the United States and the Soviet Union completed the historic Apollo-Soyuz test project, ASTP, marking the first joint spaceflight during the Cold War. The mission aimed to test the compatibility of rendezvous and docking systems between the American Apollo spacecraft and the Soviet Soyuz spacecraft. The Apollo-Soyuz test project represented a significant milestone in the space race between the two superpowers. Astronaut Thomas Stafford commanded the American Apollo spacecraft, while cosmonaut Alexei Leonov commanded the Soviet Soyuz spacecraft. The spacecraft rendezvoused and docked in orbit, allowing the crews to transfer between them. This docking event was historic, marking the first time American and Soviet spacecraft had docked in space. The crews performed joint experiments and tests throughout the mission, exchanged gifts, and conducted television broadcasts between the two spacecraft. The mission lasted approximately two days, after which the spacecraft undocked and returned to Earth separately. The success of the Apollo-Soyuz test project paved the way for future international cooperation in space. It laid the foundation for subsequent joint missions and collaborations between the United States and Russia, such as the Shuttle Mir program in the 1990s and the ongoing partnership in the International Space Station, ISS, which began in the late 1990s. Why was the exploration of Venus so significant during the space race? At the height of the space race, the Soviet Union achieved a significant milestone in space exploration, earning a high score on the leaderboard. In 1970, the Soviet Union successfully landed a spacecraft on Venus. The mission, known as Venera 7, demonstrated remarkable ingenuity and determination despite the inhospitable conditions of Venus, which shares similarities in size and mass with Earth. The challenges faced during this ambitious attempt were numerous. The atmospheric pressure on Venus was a staggering 92 times higher than Earth's, comparable to being nearly a kilometer deep in Earth's oceans. Additionally, Venus harbors extreme heat due to its carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere, creating a runaway greenhouse effect that makes it the hottest planet in our solar system. With an average surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius, Venus can even melt lead. Despite these formidable obstacles, the Soviet Union's exploration of Venus continued. The planet's strong magnetic field provides protection from the solar wind and gives rise to electrifying tempests and celestial lightning displays. These cosmic variables make Venus an incredibly challenging destination, with harsh conditions and no direct communication with Earth. Nevertheless, the Soviet Union remained undeterred in its insatiable hunger for space exploration, perceiving Venus as the ideal proving ground to assert its superiority. The Soviet Union embarked on a series of venerable Venera missions, resolute in unraveling the mysteries that shrouded this celestial neighbor. The first probe, Venera 1, was a marvel in its own right. Weighing an astonishing 1,400 pounds, this meticulously designed spacecraft featured an interior meticulously pressurized to slightly over one atmosphere. The purpose of this meticulous engineering was to ensure the optimal functioning of its instruments, as well as to maintain a stable temperature within its confines. Indeed, it stands as a testament to the indomitable spirit of scientific endeavor. Despite a setback that caused Venera 1 to deviate from its planned path beyond Earth's orbit, the Soviet Union persevered without giving up. Learning from their previous setback, they launched a second attempt on February 12, 1961. 
Unfortunately, while drawing close to Venus, this bold mission fell short of reaching its ultimate destination. Nonetheless, it managed to approach close to 62,000 miles of the captivating planet, leaving an indelible mark on humankind's quest for knowledge. Undeterred by adversity, the Soviet Union pressed on, giving rise to the remarkable spacecraft Venera 2, which bore a striking resemblance to its predecessor. On February 27, 1966, Venera 2 accomplished its audacious flyby, venturing within a mere 15,000 miles of its elusive target. Tragically, however, it succumbed to the formidable challenge of overheating, its signals lost forever in the vast expanse of space. It is still uncertain whether the unfortunate fate of Venera 2 occurred before or after its close encounter with Venus, as the exact timing remains unclear. Following that, the Soviet Union developed a subsequent group of spacecraft known as Venera 3, 6, with a specific focus on delving deeper into the atmosphere of Venus. Weighing approximately 2,000 pounds, these probes were equipped with various sensors. However, not all of these missions yielded fruitful results. Venera 3, the first spacecraft to successfully land on our neighboring planet, encountered an unfortunate outcome when it crashed upon reaching the surface. On the other hand, Venera 4 spent over 90 minutes collecting valuable data during its descent through Venus's dense atmosphere on October 18, 1967. During its descent, Venera 4 made notable discoveries. It found that Venus lacked a global magnetic field and had elevated atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, as expected. Unfortunately, the probe succumbed to the oppressive conditions of the planet's surface and quickly melted. Venera 5 and Venera 6 debuted five days apart in January 1969 and shared a similar design to Venera 4. As these spacecraft plunged into Venus's atmosphere, they swiftly began taking precise measurements of the environment's temperature, pressure, and composition. Although they resembled Venera 4, these spacecraft were more durable in construction. The Venera 5 and 6 probes were housed in a bus weighing 1130 kilograms, while the spherical probes weighed 405 kilograms. They were built to withstand decelerations of up to 450 G1. Venera 5 and 6 parachutes were intentionally thinner than those on Venera 4, allowing the spacecraft to fall faster and reach lower altitudes while still functioning. When the probe's top was expelled, the instruments were exposed to the environment, enabling the parachute deployment. Venera 7's descent module represented a significant advancement in achieving a safe landing on Venus. It was heavily fortified to endure the harsh conditions on the planet's surface. The spacecraft took off on August 17, 1970, and had a mostly successful flight, culminating in a successful landing on December 15, 1970. However, it took approximately 30 minutes of freefall before it finally touched down at around 38 miles per hour. Initially, Venera 7 was considered a failure, but it eventually provided usable data. The lander revealed that the surface temperature surpassed 900 degrees Fahrenheit, blistering hot. Although the probe's pressure sensor failed during descent, scientists could estimate a surface pressure of about 92 bars, equivalent to more than half a mile beneath the ocean's surface. Venera 8 arrived on Venus on July 22, 1972, following a similar landing trajectory as Venera 7. However, this time, the lander remained upright. Venera 8 demonstrated that future missions could capture images of Venus despite the planet's harsh atmosphere. Venera 8 confirmed the feasibility of recording Venus's vistas by measuring the ambient light levels on the surface. Venera 9 through Venera 12, weighing over 11,000 pounds each, are the most renowned Soviet expeditions to Venus. This is primarily attributed to their landers being equipped with cameras capable of capturing direct images of the planet's surface. During their visits between 1975 and 1978, some cameras encountered issues with their lens covers, hindering their functionality. Nevertheless, a few managed to take and transmit the first-ever images from the surface of our solar system's second planet. The initial images captured by Venera 9 and Venera 10 were eerie, presenting a sharp and detailed yet distorted perspective in all directions due to the utilization of wide-angle lenses. 
These images unveiled a stony and alien terrain stretching into the vast distance. Additionally, the photographs provided a glimpse of the landers themselves, showcasing their distinct Soviet design. The Venera 13 and 14 probes, launched in 1981, featured more sophisticated versions of the landers employed in the Venera 9 through 12 missions. These upgraded probes incorporated acoustic devices to measure the speed of the Venusian wind. Venera 15 and Venera 16, weighing over 9,000 pounds each, lacked landers, but instead utilized cutting-edge radar-based imaging equipment to conduct comprehensive surveys of the entire planet from a safe distance. Employing elliptical orbits, these probes produced maps of superior resolution compared to the previous Pioneer 12 mission, with nearly a mile per pixel resolution. The data returned by these probes offered remarkable insights into Venus's rough environment, revealing impact craters, towering peaks, and lava-flooded basins. One of the Soviet Union's most notable achievements in space exploration was the Venera 13 mission. In 1982, this mission successfully landed on the surface of Venus, further expanding our understanding of this mysterious planet. Through the Soviet Venera spacecraft missions, we learned that Venus has extreme conditions with a thick atmosphere primarily composed of carbon dioxide. This atmospheric composition creates a potent greenhouse effect, leading to the planet's scorching surface temperatures. The surface of this intriguing planet is very hostile, characterized by rugged terrain, towering mountains, and prominent volcanic features. Its landscape showcases the remnants of past volcanic activity, indicating a turbulent geological past. Unlike our planet Earth, Venus lacks liquid water and contains only trace amounts of water vapor within its atmosphere. Moreover, Venus is shrouded in dense clouds predominantly consisting of sulfuric acid. These clouds obscure the planet's surface and reflect sunlight, further intensifying the greenhouse effect. The combination of the thick atmosphere, high concentration of greenhouse gases and cloud cover contribute to the extreme heat experienced on Venus. The planet exhibits a fascinating phenomenon known as super-rotation. Its atmosphere experiences hurricane-like winds at high altitudes, resulting in a rapid and persistent rotation around its axis. This atmospheric phenomenon adds to the planet's dynamic nature and unique weather patterns. While Venus is currently considered geologically inactive, extensive volcanic features suggest a volatile volcanic history that has significantly shaped its geology. The absence of tectonic plate movements, such as those found on Earth, further differentiates Venus from our planet. What's the secret behind the declassified photos from Venus? Despite being conducted in the 1970s, when the available technology was significantly inferior to today's, the Soviet Venera spacecraft missions were remarkable. These missions demonstrated remarkable sophistication, enabling them to gather valuable data about an uncharted planet. One major objective of the Venera 9 to 12 missions was to capture photographs of this extremely hot and volcanic planet. However, there was something sketchy about the Soviet Venera missions. They didn't tell the world everything. The Soviet Union did not release some photos to the international scientific community. The Soviet government considered these photos state secrets to maintain its edge in the space race against the United States. However, a few notable scientists, including Michio Kaku, recently presented declassified photos from Venus that didn't make it to the public archive. These photos reveal rocky outcrops and majestic peaks as enduring testaments to the planet's turbulent geological past. The landscape showcases the immense forces that once shaped Venus, with frozen volcanic features adding a captivating element. The scars of past eruptions create a hauntingly beautiful scene visible in these images, Kaku pointed out many interesting details in the Venus photographs, further providing context on the strange planet and encouraging us to learn more about it. One of the most exciting discoveries was evidence of widespread volcanic activity on Venus, seen in lava flows and craters. These stunning features illuminate the planet's past, hinting at its boisterous geological history. Moreover, the evidence for water erosion such as polished rocks and channels cut into the ground, is just as strong on Venus. This finding prompted researchers to speculate about the planet's original temperature and the possibility of water's presence on the surface. 
As we examine these pictures, it becomes clear that Venus had a rich mineralogy, evident in the variety of rock hues and textures. This fascinating discovery suggests a complicated geology that requires further research. Michio Kaku made several fascinating observations, such as the identical rocks on Venus, Earth, and Mars. This similarity sparks our interest, suggesting that the three planets could have a common ancestry or evolutionary history that we had not previously considered. Despite all the new information, several things about Venus remain a mystery. Bright areas and dark regions suggest intriguing prospects for biological or geological action. These mysterious occurrences offer us a provocative mystery that requires investigation. On the other hand, NASA, which is highly respected in the field of space exploration, achieved a successful impact mission in 1978 with the Pioneer Venus 2 spacecraft, but has yet to accomplish a landing on Venus. However, NASA is currently developing the Da Vinci spacecraft, which is slated to conduct an atmospheric probe in 2031. Additionally, two more missions are planned in the next few years. The Da Vinci, Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigation of Noble Gases Chemistry and Imaging Mission is primarily dedicated to studying the atmospheric descent of Venus. Its main objective is to gather crucial data about Venus's atmosphere during the descent process. Although not its main focus, Da Vinci may also transmit surface data for a limited time, providing additional insights into the planet's composition and geology. It's worth noting that while NASA hasn't directly landed on Venus, the pioneering Mariner 2 spacecraft achieved a historic milestone in 1962 by becoming the first spacecraft to visit a planet beyond Earth. During its brief 42-minute scan of Venus, Mariner 2 gathered valuable information that significantly enhanced our understanding of Venus's atmospheric conditions, including its intense heat and other important characteristics. Thanks for watching. Check out the video you see on your screen right now. It's truly unbelievable.